Welcome to my final mock draft of the NFL mock draft season. We are days away from the 2021 NFL draft. And this final mock draft, it will include trades. So I'm going to also try to keep this within 15 to 20 minutes. Because I've noticed a lot of the mock drafts I've done this season, I feel like they've gone way too long. So I'm going to try to keep it within 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm not going to go in depth on every single pick. I probably will on a few of them, but not all of them. So let's get the easy stuff out of the way here. We know that Jacksonville is going to go with Lawrence at one. We know that Jets are going to go Wilson at two. So the easy part is out of the way. Now the real draft begins with the 49ers. And according to Rappaport, Ian Rappaport, by the way, that the third pick is down to Trey Lance or Mac Jones. And I thought at the beginning that it was going to be for Justin Fields. Then some say that Justin Fields' draft stock is falling down a bit and that Mac Jones could be the more ideal selection here. And then that Mac Jones could be a reach. I mean, Mac Jones could possibly be a reach depending on how you look at the situation. But in my honest opinion, though, I feel like if the 49ers wanted Mac Jones, they would have they would have just hung on to that 12th pick because there was no way that Mac Jones was going to be in the top 11 in my mind. At least... I mean, there was a rumor that Carolina was interested in Mac Jones with the eighth selection. And maybe that's why the 49ers wanted to trade up if they wanted Mac Jones to ensure they got Mac Jones. But I think it could be, I think it's going to be Trey Lance. If it were to come down to those two, I feel like Trey Lance is the ideal pick. So as much as I don't want the Falcons to trade this fourth overall pick because I want them to have Kyle Pitts, I think that with this first draft, with your new head coach, Arthur Smith, and your new GM and Terry Fontenot, it's best try to get Capita for later on the draft. I mean, as someone that's been following the Falcons for years now, I want to go with Kyle Pitts. I think that if they don't find a trade through this fourth overall pick, I think they will take Kyle Pitts with this fourth overall pick. But I think the Broncos are going to trade up to the number four to the number four slot. And they will, of course, give up that ninth pick, a first round pick for next season. And then I also think they will throw in their second round pick as well as pick 114. And I just think with the 49ers passing on Justin Fields, I think we see the Broncos take Justin Fields here with that fourth pick. But what if the Broncos don't want to trade for Justin Fields? Then the pick here is for Atlanta going with Kyle Pitts. So just want to keep that in mind. Because I thought about doing a mock draft, a final mock draft, where there was one with trades and without it. But I'll just briefly explain these things if this trade scenario doesn't go through. Now, the Bengals are on the clock now. And I think that they will go with Jamar Chase here. I just think they want to reunite Joe Burrow with Jamar Chase. That's what Joe Burrow wants. And you got to make your franchise QB happy. And I know there are some that will say, well, but drafting Penny Sue, well, it protects Joe Burrow better. True. But you got to keep in mind, there are going to be other offensive tackles available in later rounds, and especially round two. Because the Bengals, they'll be picking pretty early in that second round where they can get an offensive tackle. All right, next we got the Miami Dolphins. Are the Dolphins going to be tempted 
to take Kyle Pitts? Or do they go with what could be a smarter move to some or to many and take Panay Sulu? I just think the fact that you let Kyle, that Kyle Pitts went outside, is outside the top five here. I think you got to take advantage of that. So I think the Dolphins, they go with Kyle Pitts. I know the Dolphins right now have Mike Gesicki, but Kyle Pitts can also line up at wide receiver. And plus, the Dolphins will have the 18th pick as well, so they could take whoever they want. So I think they take Kyle Pitts here. Next, we have the Lions in the clock. And there has been reports that the Lions and Panthers, they were both open to trading out of their prospective positions in this draft. But I think the Lions, I think they're going to go with something that can help out Jared Goff. And that is speed. And they go with Jalen Waddell out of Alabama. And then I think that the Panthers, I think they will follow suit here and they will try to help out Sam Darnold in the best way possible by going with Devontae Smith out of Alabama. So now we have the Falcons at pick nine. And if this were to happen, you've got to give some credit to the Falcons right here because in my mind, pick four, it's down to one of the quarterbacks, Kyle Pitts or Penny Sewell. And the fact that the Lions and the Panthers and the Dolphins and the Bengals, as well as those two teams that could have really used offensive lineup, in my opinion, the fact they passed on Penny Sewell. I think the Falcons, if this were to happen, I think they go with Penny Sewell. Next are the Cowboys with pick 10. And I think they go with the pick that I found pretty obvious throughout the entire draft process. And that is a corner. Patrick Sertain at Alabama. And the Cowboys defense, the secondary, was the weakest point last season for Dallas. So they take the best corner in this draft and go with Sertain. Next, we've got the Giants. And something really interesting happened on social media today, and that was that the Chargers put a picture on their Twitter account saying they were going to move up to the 11th spot. So they had them switching draft picks, and then the Chargers, I believe, they threw in pick 77. So we're going to force that trade. So now the Chargers will be picking with the 11th pick. And I think they go with Rashawn Slater out of Northwestern. This is to build protection for your franchise QB and Justin Herbert. Next, we have Philadelphia on the clock. And what do the Eagles do here? Because the best corner in Sertain is off the board. Well, when we, when we look at the Eagles' biggest needs here, a QB, which I think that's – I'm not sure why they have that as their biggest need because I really thought they were committed to Jalen Hurts after trading Carson Wentz. A wide receiver, which I think is the biggest one. And you have the big three off the board in Chase, Waddle, and Smith. A corner when Sertain's off the board. So do they just take – there could the conservative pick and go with Micah Parsons, or could we see them trade down to try to get more draft capital? Or do they reach on someone like Mac Jones? Or do they try to make what could be technically a reach, but I necessarily wouldn't think so, and take Rashad Bateman? Well, this is going to surprise a lot of you, but I think the Eagles. I think they go for Rashad Bateman, why did she out of Minnesota? I just think that they just need to address their bigger needs here. And the Eagles, they could potentially have three first-round picks next season. 
So I think the Eagles are trying to – I think this is going to be a rebuilding process for Philadelphia, and I think if it can be – if they can draft smart in these next few NFL drafts, I think they can become a contender really soon. I think it starts with someone like Rashad Bateman. And Bateman, he had potential to be a top 10 pick in my mind. And with this wide receiver class being so stacked, like it was last season, I think you just can't pass a wide receiver when you have the opportunity. Next, we have the Giants on the clock. I think the Giants, I think that they will go with Christian Derrissaw, the te- offense tackle out of Virginia Tech. I just think this is more of the Giants just picking up and addressing one of their bigger needs. Now we have the Vikings on the clock. And I think the Vikings, I think they will go with, I think they go with Elijah Vera Tucker out of USC. This was one of those picks that I've kind of had throughout the majority of these mock drafts. I just think it's simple in addressing your offensive line. Now we have New England on the clock. And do they take Mac Jones with this 15th overall pick? I think with Cam Newton only having a one-year deal and it's only a one-year deal for a reason, I think they do take Mac Jones here with the 15th overall pick. Next, we have the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals, I think they're trying to address one of their biggest needs. And that is Christian Barmore out of Alabama. We have the Raiders on the clock next. And the Raiders, I think, are in an interesting position. Do they take J.C. Horn, the best corner on the board? Do they look into offensive line? Or do they take a chance on Micah Parsons, who's still on the board at this point, or do they take a reach for Trevon Mary? I think the fact that Micah Parsons is still on the board, I think the Raiders take their chance. The fact that Philadelphia passed on them, passed on him at 12, I think the Raiders get him at 17. And this is a big steal for the Raiders here because Micah Parsons beginning of this mock draft process well, beginning of last season, he had top five talent. He was going in the top five in a lot of mock drafts. And the Raiders getting him, at, getting him at 17, I think that's one of the bigger steals. But personally, I think Micah Parsons does fall a little bit on draft night, but I don't think he's going to have an overwhelm, not that overwhelming of a drop. I think that if he goes outside the top 10, like if Denver passes on him at nine by not trading up, then the Eagles would be an ideal landing spot, or Dallas could be. Next, we have the Dolphins at pick 18. And the Dolphins, they took Kyle Pitts with their first-round pick. So I think the Dolphins, they're trying to look into their defense. A lot of Dolphins fans are wanting them to look at their defense here. So I think they're going to go with Quiddy Pay out of Michigan. Next, we have the Washington football team on the clock. And the Washington football team, I think they just try to look into one of their bigger needs here. And that, in my mind, is the offensive line. So I think they go with Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State. Now you have the Bears. The all oh, the five quarterbacks that we talk about as first rounders off the board. And I think the fact that Horn and Newsom are still here in the top 20, I think they go with JC Horn. The Colts, I think they go with Elijah Moore out of Old Miss. Because the Colts, they just need a few more pieces to become legitimate contenders. The Titans are on the clock now, and I think they're going to follow suit and go with Greg Newsom out of Northwestern. 
and then the Jets, I think they'll make what I think would be a Robert Sala ideal selection and go with Jalen Phillips out of Miami. Next, we have Pittsburgh on the clock. And I think the Steelers, I think they just look into their offensive line. And I think they go with Dylan Radence out of North Dakota State. Dylan Radence is a prospect I'm really high on going into this draft. I feel like this could be an area where we see Radence go off the board in this first round. And next, we have the Jaguars on the clock. And the Jaguars, do they take enough of the tackle to build protector Trevor Lawrence? I think that we see him go with Trevon Merrig out of TCU. But the Jaguars are getting a 25 in this mock draft. Let me tell you this, though. Don't be surprised if Trevon Merrig gets taken the top 20. An ideal landing spot for Merrig or Merrick, if he was in the top 20, could be the Raiders at pick 17. I think that would be an ideal selection. In fact, I think if Micah Parsons would have been taken by the Eagles with that 12th pick, then the Raiders would have taken Merrick with pick 17. So next we got the Browns on the clock. And the Browns go with Jeremiah Wusu koromoa out of Notre Dame, I think this is a pick where it's mostly about just attaining some of your needs to fill in pieces to become contenders. So I think they're going to have the same mentality as the Colts. They're going to realize that they are a couple pieces away from becoming legitimate Super Bowl contenders, and they're just going to focus on their needs and not just the overall prospects or best player available mentality. So next we've got the Ravens. I think the Ravens, I think they go with Terrace Marshall Jr. out of LSU. Now, Terrace Marshall Jr. is a talented wide receiver. And in 2019, he had a very, he had a really solid season, but he was overshadowed by Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. And in 2020, he was lighting up the stat sheet until he opted out of the season midseason. So Terrace Marshall is one of the underrated prospects in this draft class. But at the same time, it wouldn't surprise me necessarily if we saw Marshall go outside of this first round. Because either this is the ideal spot for Terrace Marshall Jr. Or it's he's going to be taken within the first handful of picks in round two. Next, we've got the Saints. And I think the Saints, I think they go with Caleb Farley. The fact that he's still on the board I think they look into one of their top three needs here and the fact that Farley's still available. Next with the Packers and the Packers. I think that, I mean, this might be a surprise pick, but I think they're going to go with Rondell Moore, the wide receiver out of Purdue. One of the fastest players in all of college football. And I think that Rondell Moore is one of those few pieces away at the Packers as one of those few pieces that the Packers need to make it over the hump of that NFC championship game, because we can never see them get over that hump. Next, we got the bills. And I think the bills, I think they're going to go with, I think they go with Aziz Ajalari out of Georgia. Just one of the few pieces they need to, hopefully get to the Super Bowl because the Bills, I think, they're a deserving franchise to get to that big game. Next, we have the Ravens. And the Ravens, they have this pick after trading Orlando Brown to the Chiefs. And we saw the Ravens with Terrace Marshall earlier in the first round. And I think they're going to go with... I think they go with Gregory Rasu out of Miami. And finally, we have Tampa Bay on the clock. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the Buccaneers trade out of this first round. I really wouldn't. 
But who will they draft? I think they will ultimately I mean, it'll probably be someone random that we don't expect. Like I'd say Kadarius Tony out of Florida. So that concludes the final mock draft of the season. So here's the overall grades here. I'm not going to go through them all. I'm not going to just go through it pick by pick, but it looks like these picks were pretty decent for the majority of these teams. So that'll do it. Like, share, and subscribe. Come your thoughts down below, and I will talk to you next time.